Hello everyone, Helen here. Thanks for dropping by to visit me again and a big welcome to everybody whether you've been coming for a while or whether you're quite new. It's really nice to have you here with me and I'm just going to chatter on about some of the projects I've been working on recently and we'll also have a, a, a couple of short walks as well. So yeah, relax and you can just sit and listen to me chatter on. So first of all, uh, some knitting projects. And it's all knitting I'm going to chat about today, actually. Um, and the first is a finished project, which I showed you half of uh, a week or so ago. Uh, it was half a pair of socks and now the socks are finished. And um, these are the Choose Your House socks, which have been designed by Kay Jones. And I bought the pattern on Ravelry and I really like the, those two colours together. They do look quite short um, and they're slightly, they would be slightly short for me, but they're not for me. So they're going to be gifted to somebody with slightly shorter feet. And they've been knitted in Stylecraft Special DK and I'm just trying to use up some of my stash really. And I think, I, you know, I don't know what they're going to be like to wear as socks. I've never made DK socks and I've never made them out of acrylic yarn before. So, yeah, we'll see. But they they feel really nice. Yeah. So I'm um, very pleased with them. And I'm halfway through another pair of socks with some more uh, Stylecraft Special DK. So oh, no doubt I'll be showing you those again, uh, those very soon. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the socks. And next project is another little Tsutsu bear. And this is the fourth one that I've made. This one is going to be a gift for a new baby. Oh, two or three months time, I think babies do. And yeah, so I'm very pleased with this little Tsutsu bear. Um, I've just made him a jumper because I think because as it's going to be for a baby I'm not sure whether even having a hat on it might it might be uh, you know a small too small to give to a baby so I think I'll just uh, offer that, that at some point in the future if if this Tsutsu bear would like a hat I will make one but for the moment I think he's fine in his in his little cable jumper and uh, yeah, and I, you know, I mean, I had no problems at all making this teeny tiny little cable jumper, unlike my other cabled full size jumper that I'm busy making. Well, uh, yes, well, I was on a Zoom call with a, a lovely group of uh, knitting friends and uh, I'd made a classic mistake of doing the cable, one of the cables the wrong way without noticing. And I think it was it was about 18 rows later that I noticed the mistake <laughs> and uh, oh, oh no. But because I was on this lovely uh, with this lovely group of ladies, um, a couple of them said, oh, you don't need to take it all out. There's a way of just um, taking out just the cable and knitting that back up again. So in getting it the right way around. So. After the call, I was straight away onto YouTube and found a really, really excellent um, YouTube tutorial on how to do this. And hopefully you can see some photos now of the rather scary looking knitting <laughs> um, when I had taken out the cable. But um, the, honestly, the video is so good. And I'll leave a link to it in the description box um, because if you ever make the same mistake as me and you want to just, you know, correct the mistake itself, not have to take out all of your knitting, uh, I can highly recommend it. Really, really, really <clears throat> a good close up photography and good description uh, of what you have to do. So yes, so I saved my knitting and we're, we're all on track again now. And um, I, I am actually quite enjoying making that. Uh, I, I say that like there was some doubt in it. It's just because it's a big thing and I just don't knit many big garments. And I'm not a very fast knitter either. So 
you know, I think this jumper is going to take many weeks to finish, but I'm, in, I'm enjoying it anyway. Um, and uh, what, what I've been trying to do, because I've got so many projects on the go at the moment, um, is to, I have certain places where I sit and knit <laughs> around the house. And so sometimes, obviously, it's in my craft room. So sitting here where I am now. And sometimes I'm on the settee uh, in the in the lounge and, you know, the television might be on. Uh, and I usually, sometimes I knit in bed. So, uh, so there's always, it's usually a pair of socks by the bed, I have to say, uh, which also means that if I'm going out, that's where my bag is. So I can put my sock knitting into my bag. And in the summer as well, I'll usually have a project or two sitting in the uh, conservatory, which is another place I like to sit. Um, it's not so cosy at the moment because it's it doesn't have heating that's part of the central heating in the house. So it's you know it, it feels a bit extravagant to go and put the heater on in there when there's other pl warm places to sit. Uh, yeah. So uh, and then. So having projects around different places means that I I tend to do a little bit on, you know, a couple of them in the different places during the day. Yeah. So I'm a, my bullet journal tracker is helping me see where I am as well. So, yeah. Anyway, and the final project I'm going to talk about today yeah, is my February gnome. Yeah, and you, there's I'm busy doing the uh, what's it is it a knit along I suppose um, called the Year of Gnomes, where you just decide that you're going to knit one gnome uh, per month, and this is being hosted by Sarah Shearer, who is the designer of this gnome, uh, and. She has now designed 12 different gnomes and I think that's why she decided to kind of celebrate the fact and thought, well, there's one for each month. Although joining in with the um, year of gnomes, you, you can knit the same pattern all the way through. Uh, you don't have you don't have to um, do each of the patterns or anything. And if you want to take part in the um, kind of the community knitting of, of the gnomes, you can post photos on Ravelry and... I think there are prizes too if you're lucky enough to be drawn. Anyway, um, yeah, so, so I've got my January gnome here, which was a very, very straightforward gnome. It's probably the almost the simplest one that you can do of Sarah Shearer's patterns. And um, this one here, oh sorry, I've got an itchy nose. Uh, <laughs> this one here uh, is a much, much trickier one. And the pattern is called Here We Gnome Again, and it involves a lot of cables. Well, um, yes. You start by knitting the hat, and honestly, it was just taking me so long. And I really, really wasn't enjoying it. I mean, I like the effect of the cables, but I really wasn't enjoying doing it. It was so slow. And again, maybe that's just my, uh, you know, not very good technique, but I just wasn't enjoying making poor little gnome here. Uh, so when it came to doing the body, um, I decided to cheat and not follow the pattern and just do it plain. Because I just, I just didn't, I, I wasn't attracted to doing that. And I think he looks fine, especially as his beard is is sort of decorative it's not cabled but it has this really nice uh nice pattern on it so i think he looks absolutely fine i'm really happy with him and i'm trying not to feel bad for not following the pattern and just doing a plain body it's a lovely yarn and uh i bought a, like the like the uh january gnome i bought the the yarn set from lucy lockett land and they're all muted natural sort of stone colours. And the reason is that uh, Luce, Lucy from Lucy Lockett Land, I don't know, are you called Lucy? I don't know, um, uh, has kind of made a little story around the gnomes for each month. 
and she decided that her February gnomes were going to be archaeologists. And so I couldn't resist buying the gnome kit because, uh, in case you don't know, I at university I did a degree in prehistory and archaeology, so I'm quite attracted to, you know, archaeology. I didn't become an archaeologist, but uh, I really loved, loved my course. And yeah, so that meant I just could not resist uh, making a, an archaeologist gnome. I have called my gnome um, Professor Petri, and he is a distant relative of a famous archaeologist called Sir Flinders Petri, who was actually an Egyptologist. He made some um, very important Egyptian uh, discoveries. Anyway, so this is Professor Petri. And so he has been out and about uh, inspecting the local rocks and things because like his colleagues from Lucy Lockertland, um, he's quite interesting on carvings on stones. Um, so, so he went off looking. So anyway, a bit of fun, isn't it? So there we go. That is my February gnome. I can go and sit there. So I think that is all I'm going to chat to you about in, in terms of those knitting projects for this week. And uh, maybe I'll have talk about crochet ones next time because I am busy making a crochet mouse, little mouse in a suitcase. I showed you the little mouse uh, a couple of weeks ago and I was busy making. So I'm used, trying to use um, yarn from Stash. And so I started making the suitcase and then totally ran out of that colour and I thought, well, I don't really want it to be another colour. So I had to, in the end, order some more yarn. Anyway, more about that another time. Uh, last week I had a lovely little get together with my daughter and we just went and had a, a walk in her local park where she goes and does a lot of bird watching. And so she took me round and showed me all the places that she spots lots, uh, lots of birds from. Um, but while we were there, we wandered into the Pet Cemetery, which is uh, part of the park. It's been there for a long time and I don't think it's in use anymore. Um, but it's really lovely and it might seem a little bit of a sad place to go and uh, wander around. But it's absolutely, it was covered in snowdrops and crocuses. And so I just couldn't resist going in and, and having a little look round. And it, it is rather, it's very touching to to read the little gravestones and, you know, people cared so much about their pets that they wanted to have a, an everlasting memorial and a little place they could go and plant bulbs, maybe snowdrops and crocuses and things. Um, so it was actually quite interesting reading the gravestones. And I was very interested to spot one that said that the pet, presumably a dog, had been rescued from the Normandy beaches in 1944 and yeah that quite I'd love to know the story of that um perhaps I can find it somewhere I don't know but uh yeah how lovely and the dog uh, lived to a, a good good age anyway because it, it says on the gravestone that he lived until 1958 so so really lovely. And so you'll see that uh, towards the end. It's a very short video I've put together now of the snowdrops and crocuses in the pet cemetery. So let's go and appreciate some beautiful spring nature. Thank you. 
So I thought I'd give you a little update of my 100 day project next. And just in case you don't know, I've decided to uh, make 100 different leaves on 100 consecutive days. And <laughs> I'm thoroughly enjoying it so far, though I have to say there's quite a lot of days left. Oh, I'm not trying not to look ahead. I'm just maybe thinking a day ahead or a couple of days, no more than that, and just see what inspiration uh, comes upon me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I've got them laid out in front of me here and I'm going to show you, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm going to show you photos that I've taken and just tell you a little bit about, um, about each leaf, uh, as briefly as possible, actually. But uh, so day seven, for day seven, I felt inspired to write a little poem. And so I wrote this ode to an oak leaf and I thought that obviously I needed to write the poem onto an oak leaf shape. And uh, yeah, and just and just as a reminder to you, what, what I'm aiming for at the end of this project is a bit of artwork to go on the wall that represents me, that represents all the creative things that, that I do. So not just making things out of yarn and fabric and things, but also things like writing, writing poetry, music, playing music. So I'm just trying to in incorporate all of those things. So yes, yeah, so that was my little ode to an oak leaf. And then for day eight, I decided to do a very simple watercolour technique um, where you just put a wash of water over the shape that you want to create and then just drop blobs of paint in and just watch the paint run and I just love that effect and you might have seen me uh, well if you saw Vlogmas uh, one of the days I made some Christmas tree Christmas cards and I used this same technique then so I just thought it would be really nice as a leaf. Um, day nine well, day nine was inspired by having been out on the walk the day before in the park where the pet cemetery was and saw this lovely green leaf speckled with yellow splodges, I suppose, not just spots. So I thought I would try and recreate that with some green felt and some yellow embroidery thread. And I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. Uh, for day 10, I used some paper and I had been looking for some vintage music paper because I thought oh, I could, you know, use that as part of a, a leaf. And I was so amazed to find uh, this music, which was a song called Falling Leaves. How much of a coincidence is that? Or how providential is it? Uh, so I thought, well, I've got to make a leaf from uh, from that. And I, so I cut the leaf shape out and then decided it needed a little backing. So I found some a decorative paper that I had with little leaves on it. And I love that. Really, really like that. And then day 11. Uh, well, uh, a technique that was new to me was it last year or the year before, no, the year before, I think, uh, was burrow stitching or visible mending it's sometimes uh, used as. And so I thought that that would look really nice. I've got some small scraps of tweed and I thought a tweed leaf with some simple stitching on would look really nice. I'm very happy with the effect that that's had. So simple. I didn't even try to be neat because borrow isn't about being neat. It's just, it's it has got quite a rustic look to it. I didn't want it to just fray and fray. So I... Um, had the idea of dipping the edges into some white PVA glue and that seems to have done the job really well. Actually, I don't think that's going to fray now. So that's, that's really good. For the day 12, I just did, I used paper again, but I did a drawing and I decided I would like to kind of incorporate a piano keyboard into a leaf. So that's what I did with this leaf. It's kind of disguised because when I showed it to my husband, actually, he, he didn't, he couldn't pick out that it was actually a keyboard. I think it's probably because I've done some of the keys yellow and some green. 
and when I was thinking about the colours I, I almost coloured all of the black keys in black but I decided I wanted to be a bit more subtle than that. I'm, I'm really rather pleased with that design. And then finally for today, day 13, uh, I have returned to some knitting because I've done one knitted leaf so far and decided to do a bit of lace knitting because I found this pattern, free pattern on Ravelry. I'll, I'll put a link in the description box and that's rather a pretty little leaf, a little bit smaller than the others but I'm not worrying too much about trying to keep the sizes all the same. They, they mustn't be too big and I don't want them to be too tiny but you know there's that's fine and yeah so that's where I'm up to with the hundred leaves and I'm just going to finish off today with uh, a walk another walk on a different day actually this was the uh, end of January I went on this walk and I just got around to uh, to sharing it with you and we went to a place um, that's probably about 10 miles from here uh, still in County Durham uh, a place called Tao Law and we did a circular walk from there and when as we were walking around um, on this walk we came to the uh, entrance of the village and um, at the village of Tao Law actually maybe it's a town I think it's a very small town uh, anyway so we came to the entrance where the name is and uh, there was a big carved beehive there with with bees on it as part of the the sign the, the name uh, and and I wondered why you know why a beehive had been chosen so when I got home I did a little bit of research and I don't think it's there because of bees but because of the beehive part because Tao Law actually was un unusually in County Durham I have to say it was not a mining town or mining village um, but it's there because uh, there was an ironworks there and in fact until the ironworks was opened in I think it was 1844 something like that there was only one house there in Tao Law so it wasn't a village or anything it was just one uh, house there and uh, yeah so this uh, chap came along and decided to set up an ironworks and this was to make use of um, iron ore that was found in the in the Weirdale or Weirdale which is the area around there the hilly area there and also because there was a lot of coal mines and so he could use the coal for his ironworks but he didn't use it as coal he needed to use it as coke so there were lots and lots of uh, coke ovens built and they were in the shape of beehives so hopefully you can see one here or a couple here and these are the beehive coke ovens actually in Tao Law and if I'd known them been there when we were there walking I would have gone and had a look for myself so I'll have to go and look another time uh, so yeah so very interesting apparently there were thousands and thousands of these coke ovens around County Durham and presumably the rest of the UK at uh, this sort of uh, 19th century time when there was a lot of uh, industrial manufacture all sorts of things. Uh, I was interested to read that the um, some of the cannonballs that were used in the Crimean War in 1853 uh, came from this towel or ironworks. That's quite interesting. And in fact, uh, another slightly interesting fact is that a village nearby, uh, which had a colliery where the ironworks took its coal from, uh, renamed itself, called itself Inkerman after uh, the Battle of Inkerman, which was part of the Crimean War. So yeah, a few interesting connections. It's 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 amazing what you can find out when you just start to delve, you know, um, just something catches your interest and you you wonder why something is there. So anyway, let's let's go off on this walk now from Tower Law and around the beautiful Weirdale countryside.
right then, it is time for me to say goodbye now. Um, I will be back again soon though. And until then, keep yourself busy and take care of yourself. And I'll see you soon. Okay then, bye.